Verbatim theatre is theatre created from interviews collected with um, real life people about um, an event or maybe a subject. And then those real life people are then portrayed on stage by actors. It's different for every director, I think, but for me, it means being absolutely scrupulously accurate to every word that is spoken. Well, home is a verbatim piece, which means it's in the words of the people we interviewed to make the story. And so we haven't got a script writer, but how we um, put the pieces of interviews together and in what configuration is how we build the narrative. If you simply write from your imagination, then you write from your recollection of people's way of life. But if you go out and collect evidence about people's way of life, things are revealed to you which are completely extraordinary and which you don't see coming. You end up getting kind of dialogue that I couldn't dream to write. It's just sort of gorgeous, the, the messiness of the language, the way it's delivered, how it's so illuminating about personalities. The roots of verbatim go back a very long way. I mean, there was the Bentley play that particularly stands out in my mind about the hearing of the House of Un-American Activities in the States in the early 50s, Are You Now or Have You Ever Been?, which to some degree was the grandfather for me of good verbatim plays. And there was also the Steve Biko trial, and there were various court trials that had been put into verbatim. I can remember on a Sunday night in the Royal Court Theatre in the 1950s, there was a play called Eleven Men Dead at Hola Camp. And that was simply a, an evening of reportage about a, an outrage in Africa. So this has been around for as long as we can remember. But I think what, you've, what, what has happened is that a couple of its practitioners in the last 15 years have been particularly brilliant. One of the problems with the Batum, it can be very static. You know, like me here sitting to you, it's just somebody kind of sitting down and talking to them. That's not particularly maybe interesting to watch on stage for an hour and a half. So I think verbatim practitioners have to keep on thinking of how can we bring it alive in an interesting way, either by incorporating music or dance or singing like London Road. I guess the next step is to make those stories more sophisticated and give that kind of narrative a more sophisticated um, arc really so we have to work more with the raw material of the text and of the interviews. Also I feel that I need to explore how um, the physical language can be pushed to some things so it doesn't feel really static. When I came to it I was just sort of taught to, f to find a good subject matter, um, be it love or death obsessions, whatever, and go and talk to people and ask them about oh, what are your obsessions or what are your fears or whatever. Um, and then you would sort of create a play which was very much like a kaleidoscope of stories under that one umbrella. I make a work of art from found materials. I'm looking for a subject which is as resonant as something which comes from my imagination. Its intentions are no different from the intentions of a Greek play to investigate what it is to be human and where the line is drawn between necessary and unnecessary suffering. That's the greatest subject of drama. And so it can be with verbatim or it can be with the imagination. I work in quite a purist form of verbatim theatre. So uh, the strand that I work in is uh, working from audio. Recorded delivery is a particular type of verbatim which basically means in performance um, and in rehearsals, the actors wear earphones through which they hear the edited interviews of the real life people and they copy um, exactly what they hear, uh, copying not just what is said, but how it's said. Dramatists use it in a different way. I know that Alec Ibrahim uses it one way and David Hare quite often adds his own words to verbatim material and uses it another way. Robin Soames, I know, when he does verbatim, actually writes it all up after taking notes when he interviews people. I do it always scrupulously with tape recorders 
and use the edited but exact words people have used. Others would maybe mix more drama within it. Um, so, for example, um, Black Watch, which was um, done by the National Theatre of Scotland. Um, Gregory Burke went out and did interviews um, with um, soldiers, and um, the play was uh, a combination of those verbatim interviews and then also dramatised scenes. You can sort of blend it. There, are, weirdly, there are rules, but it's interesting when they're broken. There's something I think verbatim seems to have a very kind of contemporary feel about it and I think actually that's kind of one of its strengths. The good thing about verbatim theatre I think, or one of the best things, is that it can be very immediate in that what you can do is the story can unravel in front of you and within two or three months you can put it on stage. We did that with the riots. Um, the riots happened in August and by the middle of October we were in rehearsal with a play with verbatim material we had done. And so we got a, a good overview, which if you'd asked a playwright to write a play about, it would have been a longer process, I think, in many ways. Personally, I love going out and talking to people. I'm envious of journalists. The period in which I'm doing the research, say for Stuff Happens, when I was trying to find out about the diplomatic process leading up to the war in Iraq, well, nobody had really described that process. And I was getting access to people who would not talk to journalists, but they will talk to playwrights because they know that they will not be identified and they'll be hidden in the action. It is a bit more uh, risk-taking, and it seems to be telling a story about people who I don't usually see represented in um, theatres like the National Theatre, in their own words. Sometimes when you do a public inquiry it's, and, and you put it on stage, you feel like you're doing a living newspaper because what you're doing essentially is taking 18 months, two years, or in the case of the Savile inquiry into Bloody Sunday, six years worth of evidence and distilling it down. And it has the impact that a newspaper report has, but even more so because it gives such a strong overview and people can see the beginning, the middle and the end. So what I think is so important about doing verbatim is that it does tell a story and it tells it in a coherent fashion where an audience can watch it, they can get angry about it together, they can find it interesting, they can find it amusing and they can also get inspired to do something so verbatim can be a very useful tool in getting an audience passionate and energised about political issues.